In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. When the pandemic hit us two years ago, we were all longing to go back to normal life. We all had that yearning. When can we go back to normalcy? When can we resume those things that we were doing before the coronavirus hit us? But very soon, we realized that we have to be prepared for a new way of life. Scientists and world leaders began to talk about what we now know as a new normal. They indicated that we cannot go back to the way things were after the pandemic. Rather, we were told that we have to find new ways, new social practices that could look like the past, but were not exactly the same. In other words, there will be some similarity to how things were before, but it's not quite the same. We have to interpret. We have to reconceive, reimagine how to go about our lives. But again, to be very frank, after two years of this pandemic, we still don't know what this new normal is like. We are still trying to understand so many things. We are still trying to figure out how to do things. We still are trying to imagine or reimagine what could be done, when it could be done, and how it could be done. And it is especially a difficult task, especially difficult for institutions, for corporate bodies like the church, because we were used to a certain way of worshiping. We were used to a certain way of doing things, having events. But now each and everything has to be thought out very carefully, planned meticulously, to make sure everybody is safe. And even then, we still are not able to, as we say, dot all the I's and cross all the T's. In many ways, the disciples of Jesus were in a similar situation after the resurrection of Jesus. In the gospel lesson that we just heard, we see that the disciples were a bit confused and unclear as to what to do next. In the post-resurrection narratives in the four gospels, we see that the risen Jesus makes a few appearances here and there. And the disciples were truly excited. But soon they also realized that life with the risen Jesus was not exactly the same as it was before the crucifixion. When you read the gospel, that becomes abundantly clear. The way the disciples lived with Jesus, how Jesus lived with them before his trial and, and suffering and death is entirely different from how Jesus was doing his ministry around with his disciples after the resurrection. 
So things were indeed very different. Now, we could say that the disciples were faced with a new normal. It seemed normal, it seemed familiar, and yet it was quite different. They were unsure of their future, especially the future of the Jesus movement. They invested their time and their energy the last three years or more with Jesus in building this movement of people, this God's movement, which Jesus called the kingdom of God. And yet, now, all that seemed to have gone. There was no rabbi hanging around with them or leading them all the time. He was just making a few appearances here and there, but he was not there all the time. It almost looked like it was time to draw the curtain, to lock the doors, so to speak, and call it off. In the midst of these doubts and fears and uncertainties, Peter and his friends head out to do what they know best, namely fishing. They couldn't sit around simply doing nothing for a long time. They had to do something, and all they knew was fishing. That was their original job. But there, by the Sea of Tiberias, the risen Jesus meets them and inspires them to continue the work of the kingdom of God through building the church. Now there are two events that happen, or two incidents within the story in John chapter 21, especially in the appearance of Jesus. One is Jesus meets his disciples and calls them once again, follow me. Now we know that when Jesus met his disciples, especially his first disciples, Simon, Peter, Andrew, James, and John, for the first time by the Sea of Galilee, he used the same words, if you remember. He said, follow me, and I will make you fishers of people. Follow me by the seaside. That must have meant something to the disciples. The other thing is Jesus Blessing the bread and the fish. Now you may remember Jesus blessing the five loaves of bread and two fish and feeding 5,000 people. But even more, you may remember Jesus breaking the bread during the Last Supper. And here he was once more, now as the risen Lord, breaking bread with his disciples. Reminding them that he was indeed with them, now not as a human being, but as the risen Lord. As the power of God himself, the power of life that is God himself. As the disciples are overwhelmed with uncertainty and fear about the future, Jesus meets them. Jesus feeds them, he gives them strength, and he gives them the commission to go forward because he was indeed the same Jesus, the same Son of God who had been with them all these years. And Jesus charged to Simon Peter to care for the sheep, to tend the sheep, to feed the sheep, because of his love for Jesus, was a reminder to all the disciples, to all the followers of Christ, that they all have work to do. If they truly love the Lord, they should go on doing the work of Christ. The mission of God goes on, even in the new 
normal. Today, this passage reminds us that the risen Jesus meets us where we are and how we are. In our fears and in our anxieties. Fears and anxieties about our lives, about our future, as individuals, as communities, and, of course, as a church. As we are about to celebrate a significant milestone in our church history, as we near the 100-year mark, and as we are excited, and yet also filled with concerns about our future. What is next? Where do we go from here? What happens to us in this new situation that this pandemic has brought upon us? With all these questions in mind, with all these concerns and, and uncertainties, Jesus reminds us, the risen Lord reminds us, don't despair. Don't despair. Just like the disciples did, just like he did with the disciples, struggling with new challenges, the risen Jesus meets us, strengthens us, and encourages us to go on. But let us also remember that we are also supposed to do our best. Do the best that we know, the best that we can, and not just sit around. And that's what the disciples did. They were not just sitting around. Peter said, I'm going fishing. Another said, let's come with you. Let's go with you. And there, Jesus meets them and gives them a new commission. Let us keep fishing. Let us keep fishing for new ideas as a church, as individuals, as a community. Let us fish for new ventures. Let us keep fishing for new adventures in this neighborhood, in this place that God has called us to be. My dear sisters and brothers, may we continue to look to the risen Lord for guidance as we continue to struggle with this new normal. And as we do what we can, and as we do our best, the risen Jesus meets us empowers us and leads us on in our mission as the church of God in this community. Amen.